Many consider this to be the best Indian motorcycle ever produced, and there's a good reason why. Hey guys, Matt Walksler here from Wheels Through Time Museum, and today we're spending some valuable time with the 1939 Indian Model 439. So incredible motorcycle. It's one of our favorites of the Indian collection here at Wheels Through Time. Now here at the museum, there's over 375 motorcycles, 34 brands of machines, uh, and Indian is one of the top brands right here at the museum. Now Indian motorcycles were produced 1901 to 1953 in Springfield, Massachusetts. Started by Oscar Hedstrom and George Hendy, Indian was one of the big three in the American motorcycle manufacturing scene, one of the top players right up until their closing in 1953. So the bike in front of us, one of the best Indian motorcycles ever produced. If you ask me, if you ask many, I'm gonna tell you all about it. So the model 439, four cylinder, 78 cubic inch powerhouse built by Indian to master the roads uh, all over America. So in 1901, Indian began producing simple single cylinder motorcycles and are actually one of the first companies to offer a twin in early or mid 1907. Uh, twin cylinder production right up through the end of the company's uh, existence in 1953, but in 1928, Indian actually purchased the Ace Motorcycle Company and began producing four-cylinder motorcycles that outshined all others. So American four-cylinder production actually started by Tom and Will Henderson in 1912 and operated through 17. They sold to Excelsior. Excelsior continued production through 1931, they're closing. Now the Henderson brothers actually created the offshoot Ace motorcycles built in Philadelphia and from about 1920 to 1927 produced incredibly limited numbers uh, and then would go on to sell their design to the Indian Motorcycle Company. Now, here at the museum, we've probably got 12 four-cylinder motorcycles and the Indian 1939 four-cylinder is really the pinnacle uh, of the Henderson Brothers achievement and per pinnacle of uh, the Indian motorcycle production really at any point in their history. So the Model 439 combines all the best of what Indian had to offer. Now, 1928, they carried over with the first Indian four-cylinders, they carried over the Ace design and through, I think, 1935, produced the engine pretty much exactly as Ace produced it uh, in those earlier years. Great machine, tons of power, even smoothness, uh, but the next years of the four-cylinder would just get better and better and better. So in 1936, they actually came out with a new design and by 1938 settled into this the final design and really the pinnacle of the American four-cylinder production. Keep in mind, guys, since the Indian four-cylinder's last production year in 1942, there hasn't been another American-made inline four-cylinder machine, period. So this machine combines all the best of what Indian had to offer at the time. So that four-cylinder engine was actually bumped up in cubic inches, I believe, to right at 78 cubic inches. Inline four-cylinder, three-speed transmission at the back, and they had some major updates to the top end for the 1938 season. So initially, these cylinders were cast individually created a lot of heat, they were cast iron, and then the heads itself were also cast iron. So in 1938, they really beefed things up, made it better for cooling. You can imagine, inline four cylinder guys, these bikes had tons of issues with heat. So what they did in 1938, they actually began casting the cylinders in pairs. So number one and number two cast together, number three and number four cast together. Tons more meat, beefier fins, better cooling. On top of that, they went to the aluminum heads. So aluminum heads, the aluminum just dissipates the heat so much better uh, than cast iron at the time. And these things, they pump the heat out. If you're not moving on a four cylinder, your time is limited. So uh, incredible smoothness. The guys that love the four cylinders, you couldn't convince them there's any other bike better than an Indian four cylinder in the world today, period. Unrivaled smoothness. So you get that twin cylinder chug from a Harley or an Indian and you kind of get your 
the thump, the thump, the thump, the thump. The Indian smooth all the way through, firing on four cylinders all the time. And and uh, I believe the firing order on these is one, three, two, four, and uh, just very, very smooth machines. Uh, the best thing I can compare it to, it's like being in a boat. You've got that really even power, no vibration whatsoever. Uh, they make an incredible sound. So one of the best parts about the 38s and 39 four cylinders, and this one being a 1939, 39 was the last year for Indian's rigid frame. So in 1940, they actually went to rear suspension. They had a plunger rear end set up. It's kind of a floating rear axle. Uh, that's when they went to the skirted fenders. Uh, but that floating rear axle, Cush things up a little bit, but it made it a little bit less of a sporting motorcycle. The cool thing about the 39.4s is it retains that rigid rear end. These bikes are made for the curves. They're incredibly smooth. Uh, even though it's a rigid rear end, you've still got the springs in the seat. Uh, so great ride. It's true to form. I mean, these things run down the road. There's no wiggle. There's no wobble. It's got that classic Indian leaf spring front end that they debuted all the way back, I think, 1912. Uh, of course, several variations, and this is really uh, the pinnacle of that uh, 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 leaf spring front end also. So guys, the four cylinder, classy as they get. They make a sound like you've never heard period. Uh, and again, Indian would produce the four cylinders right up through 1942. Very limited production, just a couple hundred of these machines made per year. Uh, few still survive today. It's one of the most desirable Indian motorcycles in the world, period. So we're going to get this one fired up for you. I want you to hear how it sounds. Right off the bat, you can tell this ain't your standard Harley or standard Indian. And uh, kind of an interesting setup too. Steve, come check the controls out on this bike. Standard with Indian was non-standard to Harley. So uh, ignition switch up here. And one of the things you guys are gonna notice is that the shifter is on the right-hand side of the gas tank. That means the throttle is right over here on the left. Uh, spark advance on the right, completely opposite to how Harley did it during the day. So a lot of us Harley guys, we joke around and say, you gotta ride an Indian with your arms crossed. Uh, but Believe it or not, it's actually a pretty friendly scenario to get used to. Uh, left hand throttle, right hand shift, it's a lot like being in a car. Uh, left hand on the steering wheel, right hand on the shifter. So it's not too foreign really. Over here on this side, guys, we've got the uh, actual suicide clutch. So. A lot of folks back in the day, they, they kind of dubbed anything with a tank shift uh, a suicide shift. And it's actually not the shifting uh, where that term comes from. Uh, most engines at this time, or most motorcycles at this time, had what we call a rocker clutch, Harleys and Indians. And you had that, you've seen us do it before, guys. A uh, toe-to-go scenario on a Harley and a heel-to-go scenario on an Indian. With the four cylinders, they actually used it just like a car clutch. You push it down, you shift into gear, and you let the clutch out. So the reason that was dubbed a suicide clutch is on a motorcycle, you, all you've got is two wheels. In the car, you're planted there, four wheels, one foot on the clutch is no biggie. If you get to leaning over here, uh, you've got your foot on the clutch, say you're on first in first gear, and you start leaning over to the right, and you've got to put your foot down, out comes the clutch, into traffic you go. So uh, suicide clutch on the Indian four cylinders. Single carburetor, generator, this is a battery ignition. They made these both in battery um, and magneto ignition. So battery under the seat, distributor right here, um, and then the generator. So uh, incredible charging system, works flawlessly. Uh, single carburetor for all four of those cylinders. Remember, you only got one cylinder firing at a time. Uh, the late 30s Indians, guys, is like really the pinnacle as, as far as I'm concerned. As flat as uh, the other Indian guys, same way. You don't get much more of a styly, beautiful, elegant, graceful, and proportional motorcycle uh, than those late 30s Indian four cylinders. Kings of the roads, the Cadillacs of their day. And, uh, Let's get this thing fired up and see how she sounds. So it's been about a week since we've run this bike, guys. We always like to bring you first starts. Uh, no toying around here. This bike hasn't run in a week. We didn't run it 10 minutes ago. 
uh, so you guys see how they start right out of storage. So we got the ignition off, choke on. We're gonna retard the spark a little bit. Give it three good prime kicks. Two, three, and hopefully one to go. Tennessee. Jack owned the bike for probably 30 years. Rode it often. The bike came here to wheels through time. It's in a little bit of shabby shape, so my dad got right to restoring the bike. A little bit of fresh chrome. Beautiful paint done by our guy John Dills. Over on the gas tank here, you got that classic Indian head uh, headdress logo done in gold leaf. And uh, just one of the most beautiful motorcycles ever produced. Massachusetts finest from the Indian Motorcycle Company, guys. We're going to be firing this machine all year long. Make sure you visit Wheels Through Time. It's one of the first bikes you see right inside the door. Come check it out. Hear it run. Guys, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Check out wheelsthroughtime.com. Check out our annual raffle. We're giving away a 37 knucklehead November 18th this year, guys. Get your tickets. It's what supports this museum and allows us to keep doing what we're doing. Thanks a ton for tuning in. I'm going to go for a ride.